Huh? That's very weird. It was, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why that happened. But it, it all just gave me the option to leave because you're now recording. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bye, That's you. <laughs> Certainly, that's new. Yeah, yeah. It's one of these. It's, uh, it's obviously the new surveillance. You, you can't, you can't just record some of that Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe, yeah, maybe. maybe it is. Yeah. Well, no, you anyway. don't. We need their permission to record. Exactly. Good. Well, shall we? Uh, shall we crack on? Yep. <clears throat> Let's. Uh, we are. We are a bit thin on the ground today we've got lots and lots of people who've uh, uh, chosen the wettest may in history <laughs> to uh, uh, have a caravan or go on holiday to wales the wettest part of britain so uh, well, that's <laughs> what we that's what we did eric we had to be towed off our campsite by a tractor yesterday so we oh, come no. home <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> dear, dear. the joys of an english summer eh? <laughs> are we getting one <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Next week. Oh, yeah, right. three days. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, of course, next week we've no lesson. So don't forget, right. uh, we're having a little break for um, what would be the school half term. So uh, so no lesson next week. Then we'll crack, crack on the uh, the following week. And uh, obviously, I'll, uh, I'll let you know, I'll let you have a note. So... Uh, We'll do some. Uh, we'll do some extra homework this week to uh, keep you all busy for a fortnight. So, buenos dias a todos y bienvenidos a la lección 29 de la clase de español. What have we got this week? Um, we're going to start by going through the homework. We've got a, a little bit more. Puedes decir. Just uh, to keep in, keeping that little revision that going. Uh, more revision, irregular verbs. I think you know them all, but maybe not as well as you need to. And then we've we've been we've been banging on about the verb gustar for some weeks now, and we're going to uh, we're going to complete uh, our sessions on gustar today with the past tense. Um, and then, uh, if we've got time, which I doubt, we'll talk about dates, hats, and how to say we need something in Spanish. Entonces, empecemos. Uh, la tarea de la semana pasada. Uh, and the question was, ¿Puedes traducir estas oraciones al español? Um, I still live at my parents' home, Vivia. I live in Peterborough. Where do you live, Vivia? And then there's a couple with Comer and one in Abla. How did folk get on with their homework? Were there any questions about homework before we uh, before we find a victim to uh, to ask? No, everybody. I've got, I've got a couple which I'll ask as you go through, yeah. depending on what the answers are. Okay, Carl. Yeah, hedging yeah, your bets. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Super duper. So, um, so because Richard and Maya are uh, going to be leaving us. I'll uh, teach you to say uh, <laughs> I'll teach you to admit it. How about, how about the, putting your heads together and coming up with the uh, these first five? Um, I still live at my parents' home. Toda via vivo on casa de mis padres. Sounds pretty good. Toda via vivo en casa de mis padres. Yeah. Uh, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Vivo on Peterborough, adore vives. Adonde. Uh, sorry, adonde vives. Donde vives, yes. Or, or so, simply, donde vives. Um, uh, adonde vives is to to where. Uh, if you so, if you're asking where somebody was going, you could say adonde vives. Where are you where are you where are you off to? Um, but um, where did where where did? Um, that's wrong. <laughs> where are you off to? Is uh, adonde vas? Of course. 
So. Does it matter, Eric, if you put the yo, yo in front of the vivo? No, it, it doesn't matter. Does, or is it not necessary? It isn't necessary, no. Uh -huh. uh, we, we, what's that? Uh, Duolingo. Well, yeah, they always stick it on, don't always they? Always has the pronouns, every yeah. time, and mm. uh, it isn't necessary. Right. Um, just use it for um, either clarification, if it's, if it's he or she, um, if you wanted to say he lives in Peterborough, um, El vive, El vive, vive yeah, yeah. Yeah, or she lives, ella vive, but otherwise it's not necessary. Sometimes you might want to emphasize something, I live in Peterborough, vivo, or yo vivo en Peterborough, uh, but um, generally not necessary. Um, I put both both conjugations of uh, you live there, the informal and the uh, formal. I was reading something the other day that saying that the uh, the informal um, is is dropping out of use almost entirely in in Spanish and has almost completely gone in Latin America. Everybody uses the informal, um, which um, which I, I've. I tend to, to, to notice, um, you know, I've, I've never really heard the formal being used that much, relatively new to be speaking Spanish. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it'd be handy if they dropped one of them all together and we could just have one less conjugation to learn. Yeah. How about, how about number three, uh, Richard and Maya? Number my three. Children, my children. Yeah. Need <laughs> Mexicos come a McDonald's. Toda la semana, 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 semana. semana. Okay. Uh, mis hijos, uh, it could be, if you've got uh, all girls, it could be hijas, but if you've got boys and girls, hijos. Uh, comen, uh, en McDonald's, todos, todas las semanas. Uh, Every week, um, we, we've got to pluralize it. <clears throat> and we have to make everything plural. Todas las semanas. So could you use cadas there, or, or cada semana? Well, well, that would be, uh, cada semana would be each week. Yeah. Yeah. Each week. It could do, yeah. yeah. It means broadly the same, doesn't it? It means broadly the same. Um, I, I guess there's not quite the... Uh, Def, 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 um, definite element to it. They eat every week. They eat each week. Mm. No, I'm just, I'm just but, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine, Carl. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do not eat seafood. No como mas. No como mariscos. Mariscos. Si. No como mariscos. Mm. Perfect. Okay. I speak a little Spanish. Do you speak English? Hablo un poco español. Hablas inglés. Inglés. Don't forget these uh, Spanish um, vowel sounds. So, I is e. Inglés. Inglés. Okay. Uh, yeah. Hablo un poco de español. Perfect. Hablas inglés. Um, you can, if you want to sound a bit more Spanish, uh, poquito. Is, uh, is is uh, you know a, a very little. Li it doesn't mean a very little. It means a little little, um, but it's a it's a it's a nice way of saying it instead of saying poco. Poquito. 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 Oh, number, yeah. Oh, number one, Eric. Um, I, I sort of keep looking at that one. What what does todavia mean? I didn't know that one. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I went I went to sigo viviendo. Uh, Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm still living in my parents' house. That that would be all right. Uh, Todavia means to, to, still. Yeah, also. Eric, all right. Eric, I would have Adrian, expected, I would have expected it to be en la casa de mis padres. Is that not right? Uh, you don't. You don't yeah, need yeah, it. En casa means means at home. Uh, en la casa means in the house. Right. Okay. Uh, so it's it's a, it's a really subtle 
difference. Uh, either is fine. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It both means the same. But yeah, that's fine. Any other questions? No. Muy bien. So uh, six more. Is anybody else leaving early? Carl was going to leave early. No, no, I'm not leaving early. <laughs> But you, <laughs> you would tell it six, six was anyone I didn't do. I, I can almost I can almost read your uh, your notes, Carl, if that's your notes there. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to have a Do you want to have a go at these? These. Do you want to have a go at these, Carl? I will have a go at those. I, yeah. I, I can't have a go at six because I didn't know what heating was, so I didn't do it. <laughs> heating, calefacción. Calefacción. Yeah, I mean don't. Uh, they don't have heating in many places in Spain. No, well, see, that's why I didn't know it. <laughs> the only word for heating, calefacción. Or is uh, there anything else? Yeah, the heating, calefacción. Oh. That's the only one I know. All right. Um, Just wondered. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me let me help Carl out here. Yeah. Uh, Poner. Um, they they may say they may use. Incendiar, should we uh, light the uh, the heating? You know, to turn on the heating. They often they often use that as in uh, sort of a hangover from when you used to light the lamp. So put the light on. They to say, shall we shall we set fire to the lamp? Which is uh, sounds a bit odd when you're flicking a switch, but yeah. So ponemos la calefacción. Uh, where do you put the shoes? Uh, Donde pones los zapatos? Exactly what I've got. Phew. Perfecto. Just made that. Uh, so, uh, oh, this is going to be the next interesting one. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I suggested we use the the verb seguir. I mean, you could um, you you could use other verbs, but uh, what did you have, Carl? I, well, I, 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 without looking any up, I, I, I thought, well, I don't know what online was. So I, I went for Seguir Espanol con la computadora con la internet. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I, I mean, I then looked it up and, and it was Seguir Espanol en línea. En línea. En línea. Yeah. 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 I mean, you. you I'm sure you'd be understood if you said um, she's taking Spanish classes on the computer. Sort of thing we'd say in the UK, isn't it? Perfectly okay. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I love to read a good book at the weekend. Uh, me encanta leer un libro bueno en el fin de semana. Yep. Just one thing there. You can, uh, you can, you instead of saying. Uh, N L fin de semana. You you would say A L rather at the weekend, but uh, occupate that to Al. So oh, yeah. join the words get Al fin de semana. Um, uh, libro bueno is fine, but buen libro is also okay. Okay. Uh, and with masculine nouns. You can apocopate the uh, word bueno as well. So if it comes before the noun, the adjective can lose the o. Oh. So un buen libro. Me encanta leer un buen libro al fin de semana. Uh, if you wanted to say um, every week, you know, at the weekends, a los fines de semana. And Carl, what do you like to do on holiday? ¿Qué te gusta hacer en las en los vacaciones? It would be las vacaciones, but we La, don't las. Know, las ah. Yeah. Ah. ¿Qué te gusta hacer en vacaciones? Muy bien. Well done, Carl. Any questions on those? Uh, one, well, yeah. Um, on the to take, obviously you used seguir. You put seguir. I mean, you don't take it as in tomorrow then. Or any other takes. You could take... you, you you could use hacer. Uh, do. She's doing yeah yeah and pro probably that would be a bit more common. Uh, I wanted I wanted to get you thinking about the conjugations of seguir 
Um, mm. so you can you can use Segir to mean to take, but um, does it mean continue? It, otherwise, is it? It continue? means to follow, to continue. Follow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I was thinking. So she continues following the courses, sort of. Thing. Well, no, no, it, it it can it can literally mean to to, to take oh, okay. a course, you know, to, to to follow a course or something like that. It's right. The meaning's similar in uh, as it as it would be in, in 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 English. Okay. So uh, let's do our Puedes Desir section. So I've done the next three on our list. Uh, Puedes decir cuatro partes del cuerpo humano que se encuentran en la cara. Um, so, can we say four parts of the face, the human face? Yeah, let's, um, anybody fancy a go at this? Oh, there we go. We've, we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll have a, little collection see how many we can get what do you think paul what have um, you got? i've got la nariz nariz yeah nariz los now i can never remember how to pronounce j uh ojos ojos yeah los los ojos Eyes, los, yeah los ojos yeah. la boca los labios the mouth and lips perfecto Anybody else? What, Ian, have you got any to contribute? I've got Eros, Eros, ears. Ears? Yeah. Orejas. Orejas, yes. Orejas, yeah. yeah. I was That's getting the only mixed up as sheep. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm not sure your ears are on your face. Um, well, they're on your head. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They'd be on your face and you had a photo fit from the police. It would be, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll allow ears. Has, uh, has anybody got any others that they want to suggest? Me Mejias. Jane has uh, me Mejias, did you say? Yeah. Cheeks, yeah. yeah. Las I've Mejias. La pestaña. Eyelashes. Pestañas. Yeah. See, see. Sí. No, I, I was only one eyelash. La pestaña. You just got the one. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. El, El menton. El menton. What's what's that, Adrian? I think that's chin, isn't it? I saw it somewhere. Chin. Or well, perhaps uh, I'm mixing it with French, am I? Yeah. Chin. Chin is similar to uh, beard. Barbi. Barbija. Oh, oh dear. Sorry. There we go. Here's. Uh, <laughs> I couldn't think of. I couldn't think of any others. Um, we got. We certainly got our four. That was great. Uh, eyebrows, cejas. Uh, Carl had uh, eyelashes. Foreheads handy, la frente. And uh, then we've got various bits of facial hair, la barba. It's always strange that a beard is feminine. Uh, el bigote, but a moustache is masculine. Uh, and I. Goatee beard is una barba de chivo, uh, which is the beard of an old goat. I've cheated and looked one up. Oh, yeah. Well, go on, Adrian. Yeah. What have we got? El ojillo. Ojillo. Sorry. El ojillo. It's a dimple. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. According to my dictionary. Yeah, nice one. Nice one. That's cheating. That's all right. We'll add that to the list. That's how we learn, isn't it? By uh, <laughs> copying and uh, from others. Okay. Um, Puedes decir todos las decenas del dice a cien. Uh, so can we count to tens mm -hmm. up to a hundred is basically what we're saying here. How about this, Jane? Uh, from 10 to 100. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Dice, on say, doce, trece. Oh, oh, oh. No, no. Uh, uh, nueve, di, diez, vente. Oh, so in ten. ten. twenty. Oh, sorry, 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 yeah. sorry. Right. Oh, dice, vente, 
treinta, cuarenta, cincuenta, sesenta, sesenta, sí, sesenta, setenta, ochenta, nueve, noventa, ciento, ciento. Cien, cien, cien is fine, yeah. Perfect. Perfect. I think you. I think you got ten. Uh, D say. Uh, I say. Um, Good. So it's worth learning those because we all know uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, uh, and if we learn the tens, we uh, we can count to a hundred pretty easily, can't we? So uh, that's uh, that's uh, that's nice and nice and easy. Uh, right, this is a this is a tricky one. Puede decir los números ordinales del uno a diez. Uh, so ordinal numbers are first, second, third, fourth. Mm -hmm. Can we do those? Is there, is there a volunteer? I don't think we've done these very much, have we? So uh, I, I normally I normally do the first three, primero, segundo, tercero. I think we did that when we were doing directions, but I, I work on the basis that if it's any more than the third street on the left, then we're, not, we're going to have to ask somebody else. So uh, that was that's my thinking. Anybody, anybody volunteering for these? I've got them written down. <laughs> You've got them written down. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> so loads of them, but yeah. Go on, then. I'll I'll put them up on the board. <laughs> Primero, segundo, tercero. Um, definitely learn those. They they will be they will be handy when we get past third, cuarto, quinto, sexto. Septimo, octavo, noveno, decimo. Um, it's um, it gets a little uh, little less important. I'm not sure when you'd ever need to use them. You never know, of course. Birthdays. But, uh, birthdays. Yeah. Well, uh, birthdays the tenth of. Well, the, the Spanish don't use uh, uh, ordinal numbers to describe oh. dates. They say uh, uno de mayo instead of the first oh, of May. Well, then, then they don't need it then. <laughs> in, Lat in, Lat in Latin America, they would say el uh, primero de mayo. Uh, but then it would be dos de mayo, tres de mayo. Oh, so okay. Just use it for the, for the first. But it's, it's, worth, it's worth knowing it for um, uh, floors uh, of buildings, apartment floors. Um, and uh, if you're asking for directions, which uh, which street to take? Yeah. And if they write it, do they write the the figure in a little O? Um, so yeah, it was to to, floor, sig to write, signify the floor in an address, you'd you'd have the number <laughs> and a, a a little degree sign. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <clears> you know then that was the first floor. Okay, so um, we're going to um, we're going to drill some verbs. Um, and we've uh, last week we looked at regular verbs a r i r e r, and um, we learnt the uh, conjugations, the endings for for regular verbs. So. Once you've got those in your head, and they do take a bit of learning, don't worry if you keep forgetting them. Um, you will do for a while. Uh, but once uh, once you've got them in your head, you can conjugate any uh, regular verb in the present tense. And there are lots of regular verbs. There's also quite a lot of irregular verbs as well. Yeah. Often uh, the changes are um, just to the front of the verb and 
knowing the verb endings, you still you still use the verb endings. So uh, segir, for example, which is an irregular IR verb, it's um, it's just the uh, it's just the beginning that changes. Um, so uh, you, you don't need to. Uh, you you still use the R S E emos is and n endings so the endings are are useful to know even with irregular verbs so we've got we've got four new irregular verbs here uh carer, which we use a lot uh poder um which we also use a lot pedir and a star uh, pedir probably not so often but a star is uh is a, is is um used a great deal abigail how are you at care can you conjugate care mm, yo quiero tu quieres el quiere nosotros queremos vosotros See, this is one I never, ever seem to use. Vosotros queréis, is it? Queréis. Queréis, yes. And um, ellos quieren. Quieren, quieren. Quieren. Quieren, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I struggle with the vosotros conjugations because they're, they're a little used in Latin America. So when I'm talking to uh, family, I, they, ne they never get used. So... Uh, well, Excuse me. You know what can we, what can, what can we say? It's um, you, you, some of you remember, some of you don't. Uh, just do your best. That's the, uh, that's the, uh, that's the answer. We've got um, we've got a we've got uh, we've got a few more to go. So we'll. Uh, We'll keep uh, we'll keep plugging along there, uh, and um, my um, my word um, mm. has changed kereis to queries, uh, <laughs> so uh, I'll correct that for the uh, for the uh, for the next one. I haven't noticed a word that outsmarted me in that case. Uh, Poder, we use this a lot uh, to be able to say I can or can I, uh, could, could you, etc, etc. Uh, Apple, how are you on Poder? Yeah, okay. Um, puedo, puedes, puede, podemos, podéis, pueden. Pueden. Muy bien. Perfecto. And... Uh, Pedir means to ask, and um, here um, it's the, the the front changes as well at the beginning. Uh, pido, pides, pide, and then we we hop back to pedimos, pedis, and piden. So the endings are the endings of regular verbs but the front changes uh, in uh, in four of the uh, conjugations now a star is one that we um, we all know uh, perfectly I'm sure so uh, <laughs> let's let's put that to the test uh, Karen can are you able to uh, conjugate a star for us <laughs> Mm -hmm. Estás, está, están, estamos, estáis, and están. Perfect. Well done. Good pronunciation too. Um, Estar is one of the first that we learn, and um, I do remember when I was uh, when I started Spanish, my uh, daughter-in-law thought it would be a good idea to give me a drill in verb conjugations as we were driving down the A1 to uh, where they were living in Baldock. And um, I think Julia, my granddaughter, had fallen asleep. So there was a, a chance to uh, practice some Spanish conjugations. And I can remember finding it so hard to think 
and drive but after about a mile i had to say look i'm, I'm gonna have to stop this lucy or I'll, I'll i'll crash into the back of her car i can't i can't conjugate and drive i can't uh, uh come to see and conjugate you know, mm-hmm. it's too difficult so there we go so pedir means to ask for something um Le voy a pedir al cabarero más agua. Uh, what does that mean, uh, Paul? Um, can the um, can you bring um, asking the can, can the way to bring more water? Uh, le le voy a pedir. Uh, I'm going to ask him. Ah, oh, right. Okay. Le voy a pedir. We're using vo- We're using ear to um, create the future tense. So I'm going to do, I'm going to ask the waiter. Now we, we have to put the pronoun in, levoy, uh, even though we've got the noun in there, el, uh, el camarero. Uh, what about voy a pedirle que se case conmigo? I thought, Casse, I've forgotten. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a proposal. Preguntar oh. uh, means to um, live. Uh, pre- preguntar means to, to ask. Yeah. So it's it's asking a question rather than asking for something. Um, and uh, puedo preguntar cuál es la respuesta. Um, uh, can I ask what the answer is? Uh, uh, puedo preguntar la hora. Uh, can I ask the time? Yeah. So. The t- two two ways of asking in Spanish, but pedir use it when we're asking for something. Uh, it might be an object, or it might be something that you want somebody to do for you, marry you, for example. <laughs> okay, uh, gustar uh, that wonderful verb that we can't stop using. Um, <clears throat> it is a really, really useful verb. So we've done uh, lots and lots of uh, versions of this. Um, let's just have a, uh, a quick recap, and um, we'll uh, we'll run through we'll run through we'll run through some some new bits too. So so Jane, I I like. How would you say I like? Uh, me gusta. Me gusta. And I don't like? No me gusta. No me gusta. Perfect, perfect. Mm-hmm. How would you say Eric likes chocolate? Ah, uh, Eric le gusta chocolate. Excellent. And Eric doesn't like chocolate. Ah, uh, Eric no le gusta chocolate. Absolutely. Perfect. And if it's uh, a plural thing, because the the construction of this sentence is um, chocolate is pleasing to Eric. So the conjugation we learn is is it, gustar in the uh, it uh, conjugation. which is gusta. If it's if it's more than one thing that is pleasing to Eric, uh, then we have to use the they please him rather than it pleases him. And that is, excuse me, gustan. So uh, Eric likes chocolates. Uh, a Eric le gustan los chocolates. And uh, Eric doesn't like chocolates. A Eric no le gustan los chocolates. Um, so 
we can we can say that we like or don't like lots of things just by learning those two conjugations gusta and gustan um, and use it if it's plural or if it's uh, if it's singular perfect um, we also uh, learned the uh, conditional so uh, very often um, the English like to use the conditional because um, it's uh, it sounds more polite it sounds softer and it is it's a it's a more gentle it's a more gentle form of conversation so instead of saying I want a cake um, you say I would like a cake and you can say me gustaría um, me gustaría un pastel a cake would please me hmm. and you can also use that as a question would you like a cake <clears throat> te gustaría un pastel um, uh, just make sure you um, uh, just let the sentence rise a little towards the end to indicate that it's a question uh, or what would you like to do this morning te que te gustaría hacer esta mañana um, that's clearly a question because you've got the k there but keep 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 the good habits of uh, 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 a raised inflection at the end of the uh, at the end of the sentence when it's a question is everybody happy with that is everybody yeah. i think for a lot of you it's the second time you've done this i know a few of you are do, doing it for the first time um but when i when i when i learned gustav it took it took a while to sink in uh you're you're um clearly a bit uh, a bit brighter than i am um <laughs> having trouble with my uh but yeah it did take a while to sink in and then when I got it at the end I thought oh blimey crikey of course um, but it's it's good if you can practice it make sure you make sure you know it make sure you know all those little nuances gusta gustan gustaria right uh, so in the last lesson we were asking what we were using Gustav to ask what other people liked to do. Um, what would you like to do that? What would you like to do? <laughs> I'm struggling this morning, I don't know why. Uh, que te gusta hacer? Uh, and if you want to tell somebody, uh, uh, or ask somebody what ask what somebody likes que le gusta hacer a Eric what does, what does Eric uh, like to do um, and obviously me gusta el verbo gustar I like the verb gustar um, okay so um, it's really useful to be able to say what you like but you really also need to be able to say whether you liked something or not. And for that, you need to be able to use gustar in the past tense. Uh, the simple um, past tense is called uh, preterit in English. Um, el preterito indefinido in Spanish. Um, and there, gusta becomes gusto, and gustan becomes gustaron, gusto. So uh, make sure we stress the the o at the end, gusto. Uh, so we can say, did you like the food? Te gusto la comida? Um, it's past tense. Did you like the food? Did you like the sweets? Te gustaron los dulces? 
So here's, here's some questions. Um, and the smarter ones will know that the answers are on the, uh, on the sheets. So uh, let me, uh, let me, let me ask Apple if she'll go through these for us. How would we ask our friend, did you like the film? Um, Te gusto la película? That's perfect, yep. Um, Didn't you like the food? Uh, no te gusto uh, la comida? Perfect. Um, you didn't like the food. Uh, no nos gusta la comida? Uh, gusto, yeah. Don't forget, we, yeah. we didn't like the food. We're talking past past tense, so. All right, so yeah. Past tense. Okay. Yeah. Did okay. Eric like the food? Uh, Eric, el uh, gusto la comida. Si, le gusto la comida. And we liked the food. Nos gusto la comida. Perfect, yeah. So often, often when you're talking about what you like or what you don't like, it, it might be something that you've just, just eaten or a place you've just been to, or uh, if you want to ask that question of somebody. So this, this simple uh, past tense form is, 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 is really useful. And it's one that you would use, uh, use a lot um, in just in chit chat and conversation, but also for, you know, uh, it's, it's useful to be able to say, what you like and what you don't like, but also to say what you liked and what you didn't like. So um, there is another past tense that we need to know. Um, and this is called <coughs> El Preterito Imperfecto. Uh, and we use this past tense to say whether we used to like something or not. Now, it's it's not used, um, you, you wouldn't use this very often. You, you'd probably use the simple preterite in most conversations. But if you wanted to say, I used to like going to the seaside, you'd say, me gustaba ir a la costa. Um, if you if you wanted to say yesterday I liked going to this to go to the seaside, then you would say gusto. But if it's something that's happened and there's no particular ending, it was an ongoing thing, it's things you used to do quite regularly, um, then uh, you'd use the imperfect. Um, I put this page in here, and it's in the notes. I don't mind at all if you forget about it completely for another year. Um, and then um, when somebody mentions the imperfect tense to you, you can say, oh, crikey, that, yeah. Um, we will come back to it, but it's not absolutely essential just yet. We're just, hey. re we're just really trying to uh, make ourselves understood. Yes, somebody, ha somebody has a question. Yes, Adrian. Eric, I creo que en la palabra preterito, el acento uh -huh. es en el segundo E. Is it? Preterito. Preterito. Okay. Let me check. I can't, I, I couldn't... Uh, I couldn't swear you could well be. If you just looked it up, Adrian, be on the si. safe side. Yeah, si. okay, okay. I'll change that. Thank you. I should, I should get you to proofread these lessons, really, so. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, we're gonna move on with a couple of quick, um, quick fire Spanish bits. The Spanish word for date is fecha yeah. um, and it's a feminine noun so if you want to ask what the date is in spanish que fecha es hoy what date is it today um, 
That's the easiest way to ask. Very simple, straightforward. Kick back, chat, has I. And to answer, um, es el 25 de mayo, um, 25th of May. Um, somebody may say, um, estamos a 25 de mayo. Uh, we are in the 25th of May, but uh, that's in one of our Spanish textbooks that we've, we've used a little bit, uh, sueños. But I've only ever used, I've only heard anybody say es el, whatever date it is. And that's the only one I would use because it's the first thing that comes into my head. And it's what we say in English, so it seems logical for us. So I'd always use the first. <clears throat> if you want to go on a date uh, or an appointment, um, the word you need is cita, not Uh, so a date or an appointment, cita. In Spanish, you say uh, the 20, 25 of May, not the 25th of May. Um, so that's, that's true of all uh, dates in Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, they don't say the first, they say uno. Uh, in Latin America, they say uh, el primero for the first day of the month. Um, but then they then they just go back to, on to the Spanish way. The two of May, the three of May, the four of May. Um, but they say the first in Latin America. Um, I have no idea why just to be different. In Spanish, Spanish, it would be uno de mayo, the one of May. And to say what year it is, they have to use the, uh, they use the full number. So um, we, we have this strange, uh, slightly strange way of doing it, don't we? For the last century, we'd say 1949, we'd break it down into two bits. The Spanish would say 1,949. Um, and then we got to the year 2000. We got all confused. We didn't want to call it 2000 or uh, 2001. Um, so it's 2001. And now we've got to 2020, and we, we're calling it 2020, 2019. Um, I don't know what the rule is in English. I think it's just what sounds best to us. Um, but the Spanish, they do they do have a rule. They always say it out in full. So the year at the moment is 2021. Uh, 2021. Um, and the dates in the last century, it's 1000, 900, and whatever you whatever date you want in the century. Uh, so I was born in 1953, coronation year. Um, so can you say or write in Spanish the following dates? Su fecha de nacimiento, the date you were born, and Fecha de su boda, uh, the date of your wedding, uh, if you're married. Uh, <laughs> if you're not, then uh, you can't, can you? How do people feel about Spanish dates? Not my favourite. Can, 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 <laughs> can you remember what year you were married? I I have to work it out. I have to count. Uh, I have to count forwards or backwards. It's not one that comes naturally to me. I never forget the anniversary. It's just the, uh, the actual year <laughs> that foxes me. Uh, Ad Adrian, what year were you born? 1951. Uh, uh, Excellent. 
and uh, El 28 de October. 28 de October. Paul, are you, yeah. can, you, can, you, can you remember what year you were married? Uh, mil no, novicientos ochenta. Mil novicientos. Novicientos. Yeah. Ochenta. Good. It's, um, I don't know whether you'll ever need those. A year, the year of you, you were born, you might be asked on, on a form and um, <clears throat> it's, it sounds good if you can, uh, if you can tell somebody rather than uh, struggle, but um, your, your wedding might not be uh, so, so important. It's catching up with me, this five o'clock start, my dog waking me up. <laughs> it's catching up with me. I can't stop yawning. I'm going to have to have a little siesta, I think, this afternoon. So, um, how are we doing on time? Uh, we've got 10 minutes. That's quite good. Got through a lesson really quickly. So, how would we say need in Spanish? We've used the verb necesitar uh, quite a lot. And it's a really useful verb. Um, regular AR verb. Um, in Spanish, you often, I don't know why they do this, the Spanish, they're all good. They've got a perfectly good verb saying, to, which means to need, and uh, they uh, they have to add something else in. I guess, I guess we do this in English too. But they, they use this phrase, hacer falta, uh, which means to, uh, to have need. Um, and, and they'd use it in, in this form. So, uh, to need the car, hace falta un carro. Um, and it works a little bit like gust, gustar um, works. So, hace falta is um, if it's one thing you need, but if it's several things that are needed, it's asen falta. So uh, you need some nappies for the children. Asen falta pañales. Um, the baby needs nappies. Le asen falta pañales al bebé. So again, uh, it's a little bit like gustar. I could have said uh, al bebé le asen falta pañales. Um, <laughs> It's, um, <coughs> you, you don't need to learn how to use it, but you will definitely hear it said. It's used a lot. Um, this, this, the Spanish seem to like to use it rather than use necesitar. So it's good to know. And um, if you ever take your GCSE, it's one of those little quirks that shows that you understand a bit of colloquial Spanish and uh, it should should get you an extra mark which is always nice might be the uh, difference between uh, you can't fail the GCSE now can you I don't think you just go down to uh, something like grade E E Z something like that I don't know what the grades are now it's all changed it? but um, but it might be the difference between uh, a, a, a merit and an A or something like that. Distinction and an A. Eric, just a question while you were asking about that. Can you take um, GC, GCSE Spanish through U3A? No, uh, you, you can't. You'd, you'd have to uh, you'd have to apply to the college. I do know somebody that did their uh, GCSE Spanish. Um, who was who was in our class, um, and I, I I think she did it through the regional college. Right, she, she took it there. Um, so you can do it, yeah, you can do it, but but not through U three A. Um, I, um, I I think a lot of us have an aversion to exams, having <laughs> sat many of them during our lifetime, and um, one of the vows we make when we retire is I'm never going to do another exam. So, that sounds fair. So, so I, don't, right. I don't know. It might be uh, if you if you want to, you can do. 
you, you know, it was more Julie was thinking about it, but it was yeah. just find the easiest way around it. I think Julie would sail through a GCSE Spanish. Yeah, she might. She might be schooling herself for A level. Could you tell her that, please? <laughs> Can I tell her that. <laughs> uh, so, um, I want to just finish off with um, with a, a just a, 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 an odd little couple of minutes. Uh, colloquial phrases always handy to know or um, knowing what different things are called. Uh, so, who knows the word in Spanish for hat? Or sombrero. 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 But there are lots of different kinds of hats, and uh, we've got lots of different names for hats, haven't we? Um, so, in Spanish, uh, a bere is una moina. Uh, I've never heard that spoken in Spanish, but I have heard gora, which means a cap, uh, and goro, un goro, is a woolly hat. Uh, so una gora is a, a bit like Andy Cap, although he looks a bit trendier than Andy Cap. That chap, that chap there, doesn't he? Uh, and un goro is a is a, a woolly hat, sort of thing you'd wear in uh, in winter. Uh, a baseball cap, um, which you will uh, you will probably hear from time to time, is una gora de baseball, but um, it's always shortened to una baseball, uh, just for ease. Uh, which, uh, which we don't do, the Spanish do. So, Spanish hats. Right, any questions about today's lesson? No, no, thank you. Oh. No, no, thank good, you. good. I managed to stay awake, which is an achievement. I'm sorry for all the yawning. Um, <laughs> blame my dog. Um, and um, I'll, I'll try and have an early night next time. Uh, so even if I get woken up at five, I won't be, uh, I won't be yawning. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Oh. Is it your dog that's waking you up or light round here? It's the dawn chorus. Oh, no, I don't. It, 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 well, the dawn chorus is, is, is quite loud at the moment, and uh, there's some very uh, vocal blackbirds on our yeah. back garden, which, uh, which is nice. But uh, I tend to sleep through the dawn chorus, but when the dog puts a paw on your face, <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> to sleep. Yeah, yeah. Damn, damn dogs. Uh, so, uh, no lesson next week. We're going to have a break uh, for the half term. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. Yeah, brilliant. So, yeah. brilliant. Thanks, Eric. Enjoy, Thank you. The, Thank you. enjoy the beautiful Gracias. May weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank Adios. you. Bye. Adios. Ciao. Adios. Ciao a todos. Yeah. Adios. Adios.